Hey, what's up? It's HJ. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do an inductive study of what it means to be the light of the world. As a Christian, if you grew up in church, you probably heard this a million times, but it's like, okay, what does that mean? I'm the light of the world. Let's see what scripture says. Not just what our grandma told us, not just what Sunday school told us, but what does God's word say? And what does that actually mean to be the light of the world? Keep watching. You. This is Matthew 5, and this is Jesus speaking the Sermon on the Mount. Um, you is the believer. Believer. It's always important to understand the context of who's speaking and who they're speaking to. Believers, you are, not you might be. You should be. You could be the light of the world. No, you are are the light of the world. How do we know that? Well, scripture interprets scripture. And we know from scripture that the Holy Spirit, whenever we are saved, indwells us. So because we have this spirit giving us the strength and giving us a new heart and a new mind, we are the light of the world. So what is the light of the world? Well, scripture is about to tell us. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people hide a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to the whole house. Okay, so I want to paint you a picture. Remember, scripture was not written for 2019 um, American believers. It was written for its people in its day and its time. Imagine that you are in the time of Jesus and you are going from one city to another city. You have your camels, you know, you have whatever's with you, you have your food, you have your whatever, everything you're bringing with you to, on this journey to the next city. It's in the middle of the night. You're going through the desert, it's dark, it's really cold, it's scary, nobody's allowed around. There are no street lights, there are no fires, there are no camps, it's pitch black. You hear wolves and coyotes and whatever is in that region at that time, and there's even bandits and thieves. You are scared. You want to be at your destination already. You don't want to stop for camp because you don't want to get robbed. You want to keep going, but it's scary and it's cold and everything that I just said there's no hope, right? But it's saying that we are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Now imagine you're walking in that cold, dark night and in the distance, you see lights shining. Oh my gosh, I'm so close to the city. I'm almost to my destination. What does the city represent? This city in that dark night set on a hill in the distance that you can see represents hope. I'm almost there. It represents rest from your weary journey. It represents um, protection, protection. You are not gonna be out in the middle of the dark where people can just like kill you and steal all your stuff or wolves are gonna ravage you and eat all your food or bears or whatever it may be. Hope, rest, protection. It represents community. There are people there, you're not alone. It represents um, love and warmth and all of the things that you would be looking for if you were stranded, not stranded, but on this journey, it represents light. You are just wandering in darkness. It's scary when you're in darkness. There's no hope when you're in darkness, but this city represents all of these things. And Jesus is saying, you are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Whenever we are in the word and whenever our, we are walking by the Spirit. We are shining a light so bright to this dark wor world that cannot be hidden. The hope that we have can't be hidden. The protection and the rest in Jesus that we have, the community that we have with His people, the love, the warmth, the light cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to the, all the house. So Jesus is saying, you are the light of the world and you are these things now don't hide it nobody is going to be these things and be this light and be this lamp and then just hide it under a basket no you are going to put it on a stand back in the day they didn't have electricity right so they're not going to light a candle at night when they can't see in their home and put it under a basket the whole point of a candle is to light up the entire home so that you can be with your family in the dark. You can clean your clothes, cook, whatever it may be that you're doing. Read a book with your family in the dark and light up your home. They're not hiding it, so we shouldn't hide it either. It gives light to all in the house. This is the second analogy. So we have the city on a hill. We're lit up for people in the darkness to see. And then we have the light that shines light to the whole home so that people can 
live in this. Don't hide it. You are this. Not maybe this, not could be this. Believer, you are a light. Do not hide your light. In the same way, let your light shine. So in the same way that somebody doesn't put it under a basket and um, they want to give light to the whole house, let your light shine before others. Remember, this your light, it's not because of who you are. It's not because you're so good, you're so great, you're so personable, and you're so lovely, and you're so beautiful. This is the light of Christ that is in you. That's why this is only to believers. If this was just to the whole world, we could be talking about beauty and charisma and funny and talent and skill. But no, this is believers because only believers have the light of Christ. Shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So a part of this shining, they say, go and shine your light. How do I shine my light? Scripture tells us here, good works in Christ. Being there for people, praying for people, giving the gospel, being a shoulder for somebody to cry on, giving people wisdom whenever they're confused, giving people food when they're hungry, giving people security and hope and rest and protection and community and love and warmth and hope and light in Christ. You have to actively do these things. A, light, a part of being a light is active. You have to be active. You can't sit at home Monday through Saturday, go to church on Sunday and repeat and think that you're being the light of Christ. That's not what the light of Christ did. The light of Christ is actively pursuing people with these things. What kind of people? The people in the dark world that need this light. The people on their journey looking for this hope. And they see that, that city hidden in the distance. But why? Remember, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's not so people can be like, wow, you're so nice. Wow, you can afford to buy me food when I can't afford to buy my own food. Wow, you're so giving. You're so generous. No, it is to give glory to your Father who is in heaven. If people try to take your good works and make it about you, you point it back to God and you say, no, God has given me this heart. God has given me this desire. God has given me this hope and this community and this love and this protection. And I want you to have it too. I want to share that with you. Another thing it doesn't say is do good works so that you're, so that God can be your father in heaven. It's not to earn salvation. It's not to earn good standing before God. Your fa- this, this God in heaven is already your father which is more proof that this is about believers. Your father is already in heaven. You're not earning your salvation. You already have your salvation. This, these are the good works that flow out of a heart that is grateful for God's grace, not trying to earn God's grace. So please don't take good works as earning. This is not earning. This is because our father is already in heaven and we're already saved, already saved. And that's very important that you don't think you can try to earn right standing with God because you can't. That is a free gift from Jesus. Um, So I just wanted to encourage you guys with this. I would say some application is what what good works are you doing? What good works are you doing? Um, Who are you pursuing? And um, is that how you spell pursuing? I feel like that's not right. That's a you right there. (laughs) Who are you pursuing? And um, how are you shining your light? How are you shining? These are important to make sure that we're continuously being active for the Lord. And we're not just sitting and comfortable in our Christianity. Oh, I'm good. Jesus got me. I got. No, it's not just for us. It's to share it with other people. So I love you guys. Don't forget to be the light of the world. Here's how you are the light of the world. Here's why we are the light of the world. Share this with somebody who could want to learn this or might need to be refreshed on this. Share it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever. Tag somebody below. I love you guys. Go out and be the light of the world.